Denmark has decided to become independent from fossil fuels for the sake of the climate, the economy, and in order to ensure the security of supply. At present, wind and solar energy already delivers a good share of Denmark's energy, and this development will continue. But renewable energy is a major challenge for an energy system that is built upon fossil fuels. Energy production from wind and solar fluctuates. It fluctuates as the wind blows. So what renewables are reliable when there is no sun or wind energy available? Another challenge is the transport sector. How do we create an energy system of renewable energy where also cars, ships and planes can operate on fossil-free energy? A great example of an energy system that will ensure Denmark a 100% renewable energy system is called Smart Energy Systems. A coherent, fossil-free energy system that will create lots of new jobs and green energy for the Danes, both in terms of electricity, heat and transport. The northern region in Denmark is one of the places where they are most advanced in the development of smart energy systems. A description of the future intelligent energy system is also a journey around the northern region to places where they are in the process of testing and implementing new technologies. It is at the Department of Planning at Aalborg University that the idea of smart energy systems is developed and described. The researchers continuously review all parts of the Danish energy system and the results have been thoroughly analyzed and compared with new technology solutions and opportunities. The unique thing about smart energy system is that in order to identify the cheapest and the best solution, you will have to include the whole system. If you only look at electricity, then you can only find part of the solution. But if you look at electricity together with heating or together with biomass, then you can find better and cheaper solutions to integrate wind and to implement a renewable energy system. The key word is integration. In smart energy systems, the energy system for electricity, heating and transport must cooperate. They have to be integrated in order to cope with the fluctuating energy. To become independent of fossil fuels, Denmark needs to streamline its production and consumption of energy at the large combined heat and power plants and in private households. Public transport needs to be expanded and energy optimization in buildings can reduce Denmark's consumption of space heating by 50%. In 2050, the Danes must use 25% less energy than today. And this despite a growth in society towards significantly more people than there is today. If we do not think uh, of end-use energy savings, and if we do not uh, think about the sectoral integration, uh, then we end up in a situation where we have two problems. Uh, one problem is we will not have enough biomass available uh, for our uh, entire consumption. And the other uh, problem is we will not be able uh, to integrate the fluctuating renewable energy sources uh, because it is only by uh, having a sectorial integration that we are able to match the demand with the production from wind, uh, PV and, and wave power in the future. And by doing this, we find the economic uh, uh, consequences of making this uh, transformation are for sure within uh, reach uh, and the total cost uh, can be at the same level as we have of the energy system today or maybe even lower. Wind, solar and wave power will provide 50% of Denmark's energy in the future. The remaining 50% of our energy production will mainly come from non-food based biomass, wood and straw all provided by Danish agriculture and forestry. In the smart energy system, the use of biomass is carefully assessed so that it does not become unsustainable. It is important that Denmark does not overconsume biomass since this will start to affect other sectors such as food production. Therefore, the biomass needs to be used efficiently and correctly.
A good share of straw and wood is already used directly as fuel in Danish CHP plants today. With new technology, biomass, straw and wood can be utilized to create even more energy. This will be done through the production of green gas, respectively through classic biogas production and thermal gasification. In thermal gasification, the organic material is heated. The high temperature means that gas is evolved. The process has a very high efficiency. Thermal gasification occurs, among other places, at the gasification plant Harbour Heating Plant in the northern region. The plant is one of the most successful gasification plants and has been in operation since 1993. The plant is heated exclusively with untreated wood chips from forests in the local area. Another part of the green gas will come from classic biogas production. The production of biogas will be based on manure and other agricultural byproducts, as well as waste from households and industry. The ambition is that agriculture must provide one-third of Denmark's future energy production. The biogas will typically be produced in facilities such as here, at the biogas plant in Gorstrup near Jørgen in the northern region of Denmark. 88% of the biomass the plant uses comes from aerial farms that transport approximately 300,000 tons of manure to the plant. The rest comes from energy crops. Gas production from the biogas plant at Jøring corresponds to approximately 5,000 households' annual consumption of natural gas. Other places in Denmark, the manure will be transported in pipes to a common biogas plant. The biogas is produced by anaerobic gasification, a process that requires the biomass to be heated to 38 to 52 degrees. When the gas is extracted, the digested manure is transported back to the farm. The digested manure that comes back to the farm smells significantly less and the fertilizer from the digested manure is absorbed much better by crops in the fields. Landbruget spiller en meget vigtig rolle i udbygningen af det smarte energisystem. Og vi mærker at investorer både nationalt og internationalt er interesseret i bioenergi. Og når vi kan fremvise gode budgetter og sikkerhed for investorerne, så mener vi bestemt der er mulighed for at udbygge området. The green gas can be used in different ways in the energy system. A part of it will be used directly at the CHP plants, where the turbines will be converted from coal to gas. Other parts of it will be used for fuel cells. Gas turbines and fuel cells are very efficient and can quickly be switched on and off. This creates flexible power plants that effectively can adapt production to the fluctuating energy from sun and wind. The CHP plants will hereby continue to be an important part of the Danish energy system. The electricity produced at CHP plants is sent to the national power grid. In total, the green gas, wind and solar could produce all the electricity Danes need. The large amount of heat, which is a residue from the CHP electricity production, will be allocated to the 405 local district heating suppliers, who are spread out across the country. The district heating system in Denmark supplies around 1.6 million houses with heating. The district heating system connects the electricity sector to the heating sector. When there is a surplus of wind power, the combined heat and power plants can reduce their electricity and heat production. And large-scale heat pumps can produce heat which can be stored in a thermal storage. The many homes outside the urban district heating systems will be supplied with heat from heat pumps that get their energy from the power grid. Heat pumps require burial of a water pipe to about a meter in depth, as it uses the difference between the temperature in the air and in the ground. Solar panels on the roof of private housing or large commercial plants are already a great part of the heat supply system in Denmark and are to be expanded. In addition, Heat will also be produced from geothermal plants, where heat is extracted from the high temperatures underground. Electric cars are a way to use renewable energy in the transport sector, but electric cars cannot do it alone. New technologies and solutions must come into play to ensure renewable energy for the entire transport sector.
One of these new technologies is the conversion of green gas, a conversion which is completed at a so-called hydrogenation plant. Such a plant is currently being planned for construction in Hobol in the northern region. At the hydrogenation plant, the green gas is boosted with hydrogen and CO2. The CO2 is extracted from the smoke at the CHP plants, and hydrogen is produced by a surplus of electricity, which is generated when wind turbines produce more energy than what is needed. The hydrogen is produced through electrolysis and use electricity to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. A variety of liquid and gaseous fuels can be produced from the hydrogenation. Liquid fuels such as methanol and diamethyl ether, DME. In the smart energy systems, methanol is used to supply the cars which cannot be converted to electric vehicles. That's right, methanol is one of the solutions that can bring us to 100% renewable energy within transport. The main problem to put transport on renewable energy is that if we don't think about this in a holistic way, we will not have enough biomass resources uh, to make the transformation. If we use the technologies, the first and second generation technologies that are being focused on today, we will simply not have enough biomass available for covering both the balancing in the electricity sector and the needs in industry and also all the needs that we have in the transport sector. If we focus on the transport sector, we need of course to have the personal vehicles on, the, uh, on electric uh, or battery electric vehicles. Uh, but then we have all the heavy transport in trucks, we have ships and we have aviation. And here there are a number of solutions that we can use and one of them is methanol Another could be uh, methane. Uh, however, uh, for both of these, we need to find some ways where we can get uh, power from wind or from uh, PV uh, into the, uh, the fuels that we run uh, the trucks, ships and planes on. If we don't do that, then we will not have sufficient biomass resources available uh, for the transport sector. The green gas can also be used directly in the transport sector. This will require gas tank stations and a conversion of car engines. Direct use of electricity should be priority number one. However, green gas may be used to supplement, most likely in trucks and ships. Green gas can also be applied to the national natural gas grid. Green gas is in fact, when it is cleaned, chemically the same as natural gas. The natural gas grid allows for storage of great amounts of gas. It occurs in caverns, which are large cavities in the underground. Here it is possible to store 25% of Denmark's annual gas consumption. As the natural gas in the North Sea runs out, it is possible for green gas to gradually replace natural gas in the Danish gas system. At the same time, green gas can create the much needed balance between production and consumption in the Danish energy system. When there is a lot of sun and wind, then they produce green gas. And when there is less sun and wind, they use green gas. And that's the whole idea of smart energy systems, to combine green gas and the integration of wind and solar and make this all work. But it's not only the technical thing to do this, it's also how to implement it. And it also the idea that if we invest in doing all this, in countries like Denmark and other countries that import fossil fuels, then we will spend the money on investments and then we will save imports of fossil fuels. And doing this is one of the best uh, economy boosters we can have and job creations that we can uh, possibly have in, uh, in economies like the one in Denmark. With the initiation of smart energy systems, Denmark will have an integrated and sustainable energy system where energy is produced, stored and consumed efficiently. Smart energy systems will ensure that energy is no longer produced at a few central power plants. In the future, a great deal of energy in Denmark will be produced locally. One example is Maia Fjord municipality in the northern region. The municipality buys energy 
primarily fossil fuels, for more than 1 billion kroner per year, money that leaves the municipality. In the future, local companies will become capable of offering the municipality to produce a large part of this energy as renewable energy. This will mean a significant boost in terms of new and lasting jobs, as well as a contribution to a significantly improved economy in the municipality and for Denmark as a whole. For my fjord kommune will an omlægning of energy production so that we buy today for 1 milliard external fossil brændstoffer til internt produceret biomasse med mere betyde at vi vil få dels en stribe en, en produktion ud af det, et antal arbejdspladser og et kompetenceløft. Hvis vi laver det regnestykke, at en arbejdsplads skal omsætte 1 til 2 millioner kroner om året og dividere det op i 1 milliard, jamen så får du de der 500 til 1000 arbejdspladser over den periode, som det vil tage få lavet den her omlægning til vedvarende energi, som vi kan være selvforsynende med. Vi har regnestykker, vi har øh, undersøgelser, der viser, at det potentiale er til stede, og så skal vi have systemerne til at passe sammen. Der er også noget, der hedder afgiftssystemer og den slags ting der. Men kan man få det hele til at passe sammen og leve op til regeringens vision 2050, så er det en vej frem, der vil betyde meget for den lokale økonomi. The self-produced energy and local ownership will mean a remarkable increase in supply security in Denmark. Regardless of what may happen on the international political scene, no one will be able to shut down energy supply to the Danes. Last but not least, an integration of smart energy systems will mean that Denmark becomes emancipated from fossil energy, which benefits the environment, the climate and the economy.